Well, as we said at the top of the show, uh, certainly a lot of implications for the markets, as we've seen a lot of choppiness this week, trading along with those headlines out of Russia and Ukraine. All three major indices now headed for their seventh weekly loss this year so far. Let's bring in Michael Aroni, U.S. Spider Business at State Street Global Advisors Chief Investment Strategist. Uh, Michael, you've been listening to Charles there about the geopolitical implications. As we see the markets get weighed down by what's happening in Eastern Europe, how are you playing your portfolio right now? Is this just kind of noise when the focus is still on the Fed and policy, or are there increasing concerns that this could continue to be an overhang? Well, I think investors are desperately seeking clarity on two things. One, the situation in the Ukraine and the tensions between the US and Russia. And secondarily, what is the path to monetary policy tightening by the Federal Reserve? In terms of how we're positioning or playing the current tension, certainly volatility across stocks, bonds, and currencies has climbed this year. So we've gotten a little bit more conservative in terms of our asset allocation, reducing some of our equity exposure and getting a bit more defensive in terms of raising some cash and even investing in some gold. But I think it's a bit um, short-sighted to change too much in terms of your as asset allocation in, in regard to the current situation in the Ukraine. Clarity is needed. But I think it, it'd be a mistake to, to make too many moves in terms of investments at this point. Yeah, on the issue of clarity, it feels increasingly like investors kind of just want to get that first rate hike out of the way come March from the Fed, whether it is 25 basis points or 50 basis points. Essentially, to your point, they just want to know. I mean, is the expectation here that maybe some of that choppiness could potentially subside once we get through March? I think it could. And in fact, I think post the first quarter, I do think that the economy will kind of resume expanding. It continues to. But I think that on the other side of the Omicron variant and some of the volatility that we're seeing, the economy, both businesses and in consumers, are in good financial shape. Earnings still are very strong. So we're just concluding the earnings period. We know that more than 70% of the companies beat those earnings. Earnings per share growth for S&P 500 companies is going to be about 27% on revenue growth of close to 16%. That's, those are very solid numbers. And so I do think that on the other side of some of this uncertainty is at least a solid foundation for the bull market to continue. But I would suggest investors continue to allocate towards higher quality companies, healthy balance sheets, stable earnings, some dividends and also value parts of the market, your energy, your financials, kind of your cyclical values. I think those are the greatest opportunities for investors uh, through this period. You mentioned setting aside some cash. When you look at your overall allocation, are you still overweight, overweight equities? Or you know, is, is there a sense that the traditional safe haven plays like a gold, it's kind of a good place to, to hide out right now, to ride out the volatility? So I think, there, that there's the whole TINA acronym about there is no alternative, and that environment still exists. And Akiko, what, we, what I mean by that is the dynamics on the fixed income part of a portfolio remain skewed to the downside. So even though yields have drifted higher this year, they're still low relative to history. So getting income from fixed income is challenging. Now you have the threat of higher rates and inflation. And we know that puts downward pressure on those bond allocations. So a lot of the risks in traditional fixed income safe havens are skewed to the downside. So that does lead us to other ways in which to protect the portfolio, gold being one of them, which should benefit from heightened volatility and this greater uncertainty that we're chatting about um, that sometimes benefits from an inflationary hedge. So it's a store of value while while inflation remains elevated. And so I do think that those properties make gold kind of an interesting opportunity here. And of many of the investments that have performed reasonably well through this volatile period, gold is actually responding as we would expect uh, as a result of higher inflation and greater uncertainty. 
Michael, what about exposure outside of the U.S.? On the one hand, we've heard from guests that Europe is a good play given the cheaper valuations there, but of course, um, European companies in the economy as a whole much more impacted or much more exposed to what's playing out in Russia and Ukraine. Does that put you towards emerging markets instead? Actually, it's interesting. In um, tactical portfolio, where we have discretion on behalf of our clients, we've actually started to increase our weights to international developed, think your EFA allocations, and even emerging markets. So we know for a while now, those, those investment opportunities have been cheaper on a relative basis to the US. But what is shifting is the macro picture, some of the, the sentiment, and some of the price momentum. That's become more attractive. So what's interesting is, um, I mentioned that S&P 500 companies are likely to grow their earnings year over year through this most recent period by about 27%. Well, companies in the international developed in Europe and in Japan primarily have grown them by 30%, so higher. Yet, they trade at significant discounts relative to US stocks. So we think that dynamic is attractive. Similarly, it, what's interesting is the contrast in terms of investors are now concerned about a mid-cycle slowdown in the US as the Federal Reserve tightens monetary policy. Well, in many emerging markets, they already tightened policy and now they're moving through the other side. And so we think that you know, there you could see a bit more of an economic expansion at a better, further pace because they've already experienced their mid-cycle slowdown. Uh, and so emerging markets are becoming a bit more interesting as well. Michael Roney, U.S. Fighter Business at State Street Global Advisors, Chief Investment Strategist there. Have a good weekend. Appreciate the time today.